I don't want to make it weird, but you are a pretty girl and I do like you. But you guys never kiss, no. so you don't actually know. Technically, no. Kiss Hello, and welcome back to Split Decision. I'm your host, Kot Takahashi. Today, we have to answer the ultimate philosophical question. Can men and women really be just friends? All right, everybody. Don't be afraid to tell your best friend how you truly feel. Are you guys ready? Yeah! yeah. Let's do this. The first prompt is, I've had feelings for my best friend. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, everybody, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, this is interesting. For the most part, we all agree, except Nina, you're standing on yes. So this was back when we first met, um, and I cannot regulate my emotions. And I was like, Ari, like, we spent so much time together, he's so charismatic, he like writes songs. And uh, we hooked up, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I really, really like him. And then there was a day when I was like in a funk, because I was like, this man does not like me. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta go to the beach. Um, I'm leaving. And he's like, okay, like just like just wait till I'm done with work. Like, I'm gonna get this stuff done, and then I'll, I'll go with you. I was like, okay, whatever. I'm waiting around. It's like 5 p.m. by this time, and I'm like, the sun's going down. I missed my beach day. It's your fault. Um, and I was like, I'm leaving. And he goes, wait, wait, wait. Like, I'm, I'm writing a song, and I just wanted to play it for you. Mm. And oh my in my head, in my little Delulu head, oh. I was like. It's gonna be about me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, like, okay. And I'm sitting there and he starts singing me this song about how he perceives himself. And <laughs> I was like, that was great. <laughs> and then I went and I wrote a song about how he will never write a song about me. Um, and then I got over it. Sometimes I can weaponize obliviousness mm -hmm. and pretend like I don't know what's going on just so I don't have to like have conversations that I don't feel like doing. But how many times did you guys sleep together? Twice. So twice. And during that time, were you aware that she had feelings for you? No. Honestly. No. You had no idea? I had no idea. Ari really is not someone was... that connects sex with feelings. Um, at least immediately. Wow. You've told me that verbatim. <laughs> so don't try to lie on me. <laughs> so you really had no idea though. You couldn't feel it. I thought she was I mean, just like super horny, you know. And like I mean, like and like oh wow. I guess, I mean, you like, never said anything like no, I really like no, you not. or there's uh, no nothing, nothing no. like that. I would rather just like let it all unfold and uh, not say anything. So. So, Abdullah and Kendall, you both say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so year three of our friendship, we went on like a mock day. Obviously, we've been best friends for three years now. And I don't want to make it weird, but you are a pretty girl and I do like you. I think like the bottom line is that we value our friendship so much that we would never want a relationship to get in the way. But I will say, I have tried to like, Test the waters. It Test was, the waters? Yeah. yeah. One of the last times I was in LA, I joked, I was like, what if we just kiss and just like got it out of the way? <laughs> it's gonna be weird, like for me, like if I overthink this, I'm like anything to me, if I overthink about this, I'm like, I don't, I shouldn't do it. So then I waited to the last minute, or no, you did. You waited to the last minute in the airport. I'm like, so are we gonna kiss or what? Like I'm going on that plane. I was like, am I gonna let my best friend go? 2,000 miles away, and like, when am I gonna see her next? Yeah. We had that one kiss, and I'm like, well, you're gone. It's gonna leave me wondering so many things. I was like, move to LA, and like, once you have a permanent solution in this city, then we can like, test the waters. No, maybe not. Maybe you lost your chance, bad. man. Oops. Oh, she said you lost your chance. I don't know if it was a chance. The door has been. And the door was closed. Well, I'm curious, what do you think would have happened if he did kiss you? Honestly, I don't know. I, I, I go back and forth because I'm like, I can sort of tell that I'm attracted to someone when I kiss them. And if it works, it works. So like, you can't get rid of that. You can't mm. not see that or mm -hmm. feel yeah. it. You would feel it right yeah. away if it was right. Exactly, and that's what I was hoping to like, get. You have no. never kissed or never kissed? No. So you don't actually know? 
No. Technically, no. Maybe we'll put a pin in that. <laughs> so you both had feelings for each other as well, Marianne and Jay. It was kind of more of like a passing thought because the synergy was so great. And I never experienced that, you know, with other people, like with other friendships. When I first met her, I saw her on Zoom in a work meeting. And I was just texting all my friends. I was like, oh, this Asian girl's hot. Who is this? And then <laughs> there was this, yeah, there were passing thoughts, like she, like she mentioned. But I think she was really good at setting up that boundary mm -hmm. and making, it, making me know with her actions that it wasn't going to be anything more. Because I like to test the waters with all of my girlfriends. How would you test the waters? Mm. On my birthday, we went to Newport and rented out this oh, yeah. penthouse mm -hmm. and we were just friends. Nothing happened, but it was, it was close to something happening. She would text her boyfriend and she would say, oh, we're having a party. And she made it sound like there was more people, <laughs> but it's not really, it was just the two of us. Mm -hmm. But she was also really good at bringing in her boyfriend, now fiance, into the picture. So that was one thing that I noticed was that when we would talk, her fiance would be there too. And it was fast right away because with my other friends that were girls, they wouldn't bring in their significant others. And I always thought that was kind of weird. Yeah, and I think it's kind of taboo to like say that, right? But I feel like it's good to be real where when I met NJ, I already was dating someone. When, when there's an attraction there, it doesn't always have to go to the next level there's just an attraction to that person. And then you have that choice to either continue, you know, that curiosity or put a boundary on it. So it's a healthy relationship. Does anyone else think that it's really important to set, you know, very clear boundaries in a male, female, best friend relationships? I do. Um, you didn't say that yesterday. Oh, 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 oh. what happened what? yesterday? She liked this guy and he was really toxic. So we were sitting at a brunch table and I'm like, well, what's his name? And then she's like spelling it out and I have her phone. And I'm like, let me just unfollow him on Instagram. <laughs> and I did it. I was like, you know what? We talked about me unfollowing him for her for a very long time. I guess it just caught her off surprise. Do you think he butts into your left life because maybe he has feelings for you? To be honest, sometimes I do think that. I think that he hates everyone that I have like you know, I don't hate with. everyone. I just think that the people, unfortunately, she tends to go for are really bad for her. And she realizes that, like, in a couple months, she will realize, I, because I know I'm right. Do you think I she think, should date someone more like you? I think she should date someone who respects her and who doesn't f around with her like her you previous... Like you? Like you? Oh. Well, I don't f around with like her. If like if there was someone that, exactly though. like you, so, would that be Maybe. Would you approve I mean, that maybe because I think, I think I'm a Makes really sense. good so person. Someone exactly like, why not? Like yeah. Why not? Like why not date someone like him? Or him. Or him. Yeah. Or him. <laughs> All right, crazy. so step forward. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am curious though. I feel like most people, they don't think that it's possible, right? Best friend, guys, girls, they can, you can do it. You two are the only ones that have never had feelings at all. Everyone else has. Can you speak on that really fast? Well, I'm lucky because Nick never tries anything, but I think that's what makes our friendship so great because um, we've never hooked up, never had feelings for each other because I think we have like a mutual respect and we have boundaries that we've set, but also boundaries that are unspoken because we're, we respect each other. Can I ask, what if he did try something? Because he said he never tried something. What if he did try something? Oh, he'd absolutely get socked in the face. Oh, for oh, sure. So get socked in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I think had... Because at the time when we became friends, I was in that that relation that messy ass relationship, and so by the time like I came out of that, like me and Lex had already been friends for like two three years. Mm -hmm. So like maybe, but I think by that time I knew too much about her, and like <laughs> I love you, like don't get me wrong, I love you to death, yeah. but I would not date you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really anxious. I could really use a hug right now. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, bestie. The next prompt is, my best friend has a toxic personality trait. Ooh. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. 
Bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, NJ, let's start with you. Oh what's uh, what's her per toxic personality trait? So there's two that come to oh, mind. So right there's more than two? one? Two, two. two. <laughs> well, one is I think you're too nice for your own good. Oh, that's right, that's right. okay. Uh, the second is you don't have a sense of time. Oh, bro, that's right. You do not have a sense of time. <laughs> so true. <laughs> How can it, we had 10 minutes I know. and then let me take a shower and do my hair. <laughs> well, what's uh, NJ's toxic personality trait? His anger. We have identified it with like three levels. There's three levels of anger to NJ. You're going to talk about the levels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, you know, like his intensity of anger at level one is just pretty. It's like my level three. So it's just really intense. Oh. And then um, the second level is like when he starts insulting people's like, when them as a person, and then the third level is like he starts insulting that person and their family members. <laughs> their family. Yeah. Their, like their cousins and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, deep family. Like yeah, no one is Families safe. that you haven't when spoken NG's to. When NG's at level here. three, nobody is safe. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, awesome. Kendall, what's uh, Abdullah's? Well, I know there's a certain word that he knows really well. Um, you're a gaslighter. Oh, oh, a gaslighter. Oh, but the that. truth is, is I have embraced it because I think it's hilarious. Can you give us one example? Oof. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what I gaslit her about. Okay, why don't you share it with yeah, us? Yeah, you do share it. So basically, <laughs> for two years we decided that we were going to be oh, roommates. that one. And I do come from a really conservative family, so I was like, hmm, are my really conservative Muslim parents going to accept that I'm living with a girl? Mm -hmm. We were planning, we were like, we're going to get this, we're going to get this, and then like, I was like, oops, I gotta go. And you, this didn't bother you, or? Well, I was really I, well she wasn't moving here I anyway. She's from I Minnesota, like, so I was like, when so, are you gonna move here? So part of me was like, okay with like the fact that like it wasn't set in stone, but then when I'm like, after those two years, like when I was like, oh wait, let's officially do this, then he backs out, and I was like, really hurt. It yeah, was, yeah, I was really hurt. It was a phase we had to go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you both say the other person has a toxic personality trait. Who wants to go first? <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, I think that at times you can be emotionally unavailable, um, especially with the women in your life. <laughs> that and um, I think sometimes your big party mentality can kind of get the better of you. Like it's, you know, every night and it's a lot. And I'm 21, so I'm like, I'm for it. I'm, I'm with you, but it's, it can be a lot. Is there an issue with it, that um, it parties every night? It's just, it's not good for you. But, yeah. It's like more for yourself than like affecting other people, you know? Yeah. yeah. Something that you do that is certainly toxic is you, uh, you usually um, go through life, and this is usually romantic, but I'm sure it's happened platonically too, and you take men and you run them into the ground and then you leave them behind and you don't even think about them. And listen, I like, there are so oh many God. men that you do that to that you're like, honestly, those guys, they don't deserve it. Yeah, so what? Like, at the same time, like, there's going to be people that are very nice people in your life that you're going to be hitching your little ass to, you know? And then eventually, like, you're going to be done with them, and that's going to be a pretty big hole. And I'm not saying not in, like, not, not even emotionally for you, but, like, socially, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially as those boys get a little bit closer to the people that we hang out with. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's going to leave a little bit of a, of a crater in there, you know? So... When you say run them into the ground, what do, you, what do you mean by that exactly? I mean like, you know, this guy, super into her, super into her, and she'll be right there. She'll, she will accept his flights to, you know, Aww. to Texas. She'll be, she'll like, she'll jump <laughs> in, like, you know. Like, like, like making him think that he, she's in love with him. Oh, yeah, in, in ways like that. I get the ick. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> that's pretty fair, bro. That's fair. <laughs> this is a question for all the ladies. How does your best friend treat women? You look like you're ready. You're like, oh my God, I can't wait to share. Uh, Nick treats women very well, I would say. I think he's the best guy I know. Um, and he was the one that cried during the Barbie movie. And I think he's Alan. But Alan? he pretends he's not, but he's an Alan for sure. Is that a compliment to be yeah. Alan? Yeah. <laughs> you need to watch Barbie. I've seen Barbie. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. Alan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next prompt is my significant other has felt jealous of my best friend. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Interesting, interesting. Okay, you know what? 
Nina, let's start with you. So, um, I'm not in a relationship currently, but the one I was in before, um, we were long distance. So, seeing me spend time with Ari, like, every day was obviously just, like, not great for him to see. And he would um, make little comments here and there. But, you know, you can always sense the jealousy. Yeah, well, he should have been here then. <laughs> What was that? Should have been here then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Do you not like her uh, significant other? He was a, he was a bore. <laughs> Just because he can play guitar really well, that doesn't make you an interesting person. <laughs> For a while, um, I had to tell my ex, I'd be like, um, yes. I, I think, um, I think Ari's gay. So like, I wouldn't worry about <laughs> it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I genuinely <laughs> did think for a while when I first met Ari that he was not straight. He was wearing this like see-through shirt. And so I was I'm like, gay? fruity. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that she was telling her boyfriend at the time that you were gay? She told me because he was visiting and she was like, oh my God, uh, he's coming and he thinks you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> Have to like act more so, like, gay, did, or what did I, you do? I, I she was like drumming out more. Right. Be yourself, but more of yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Kendall. Mm -hmm. So your significant other got jealous, huh? So during the pandemic, I was talking to a guy like around January and February. Oh, and also another guy. I would talk about you know, Abdullah and how he's my best friend, and one of them was like, "Oh, like I don't know how I feel about that. Like, like a, a male best friend. Like I don't know what to do with that. Like." I don't know, it seemed like it was a problem for him. I couldn't really talk about you after that. All right, and you both say yes. Uh, so like, for example, in the last like, long-term relationship that I had, uh, she was jealous of Lexi the entire time. The girl I was seeing at the time, uh, she had come over and she brought one of her pillows over uh, and she had left it. Um, and then a couple days later, Lexi had come over and just, because me, like being me, I, I can see why people would think that like, oh, like something might be going on because like I'm just hanging out with Lexi and our other female friend alone in my room. Like who knows what's going on? I, nothing. But then uh, I put like a picture on, on my Instagram story and they were just like in my room and she was hugging the significant other's pillow. She saw it and she was like, tell her, to tell that to, to, to put my pillow down. And I thought she was joking because I was like, there's no way anyone would be that mad about a pillow. Um, I was wrong. Uh, and we all work together. Yeah. So, oh. uh, so, yeah, so, so she went to work after that, and they were there was like weird tension. And I went. No, to the she work. did not talk to yeah, me. Yeah, she didn't talk like, to her. And I was like, oh, that's weird. You know, maybe you know, whatever. And then I went into work, and then I figured out, oh no, she's like real life mad. Yeah. And yeah, it was a thing. Okay. The next prompt is, I keep giving my best friend the same advice, but they never listen. <laughs> Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> really? God damn it. Okay, Nick, why don't you go ahead and... You said we can curse, right? We can curse. Right. Oh, f You need to stop letting these ancient motherfuckers back in your life. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh wow. He's ready. She I forgives them all the goddamn time, and it's annoying. And, like, I love you. Don't get me wrong. Like, you can come to me. Don't feel safe. But, like, I'm going to keep telling you, f drop them. Man, they bring us entertainment. No, they don't. <laughs> I think, Neither of us are entertained. I You're think crying I, and I, I'm upset. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, nobody wins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do that. Um, I genuinely love Kendall so much and I just want the best for you. Like I want the best person for you. And as he said, like, you're upset. I mean, you're crying and I'm upset. And like, she's telling me all of this. And I'm like, well, why do you do this? Like, stop putting yourself through the same situation over and over and over again. Like, when will you learn? So it's just like my, my hope is that she decides to be with someone that treats her in the best way possible. Um, I think the person that you are currently sleeping with, you need to tell her how you feel and like ask her what she wants and make clear what you want, because both of you are not talking about it, and it's gonna make things messy. Yeah, you've said it before. So. <laughs> the next prompt is, I've considered ending our friendship. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> oh NJ gosh. is the Levels only did. one. He did actually. I did end. He it. did end. I did it. end our friendship for like a good month. For five weeks. Okay. I timed it. So there was this one time where I felt like Marianne was taking someone else's side, 
and I typically wouldn't get too mad about it, but I didn't like that person at all. And I complained to Marianne, but this person also complains to her. But when he complained to her, she was totally fine. But when I complained to her about this person, she said, I'm trying to protect my energy right now. <laughs> and I understand it now, but back then I was, ah, uh, eh, f no, dude. I was really mad. And so I didn't even say anything. I just unfollowed her on social media. And then I left all of our group chats. The soft block. Wow. That was level three. I was Total just totally done. Cut off. I would complain to someone else about Marianne. And then this person told Marianne all the expletives that I would say. And I guess I found out after when we made up that she was told about the things that I said and I felt really bad. And so when we finally started talking and we had our, uh, I guess our like makeup conversation. Yeah, yeah, my right? apology session. Yeah, yeah our apology yeah. sessions and she started crying. It was, it was one of the toughest things that I've, I've had to see. What, what was the toughest thing? To, to see my best friend crying and knowing that I was the person that caused that. All right, everybody, the next prompt is, I would have casual sex with my best friend if they were down. <laughs> okay, go ahead and make your split decisions in three, two, one. Be honest. <laughs> All right, everybody, are you ready for the big reveal? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and turn around. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one, huh? Yeah, I guess yeah. so, man. Casual sex, I mean, like, that's, it, it's casual, you know? And uh, I think the, like, we've already sort of, like, been there before, in a sense. Uh, so I've also had this fear, like, losing touch, you know what I mean? Like, you know, everything always goes wrong. But, like, at the same time, like, we've, like, uh, kind of, I don't know, conquered that, in a sense, in a weird way. Despite the fact that we, were, that we like, even really weren't that open about it and we didn't even really talk about it, and we kind of just kind of were like, ooh, so we're putting that in the back, but like, at the same time, like, we still sort of figured it out. I think I just know too much now. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe that friends can kiss. Like, kiss, but not f I don't think um, I could, <laughs> I could do that again. Next prompt is, there's something that I haven't said enough to my best friend lately that I want to say now. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. All right, you wanna start? Yeah, um, again, I mentioned that quality time is like my, my number one thing for like becoming close to people, but sometimes I can use that, that constant physical contact as like, uh, I'm not sure if it's like an excuse, but I don't like, verbally express like appreciation very often. I sort of use my presence as like an appreciation, you know? Um, and uh, you're great and I love you and spending all the moments that we do together is great and I'm excited for tonight and to play on the same stage as you and every uh, time going forward. I know I tell you more when you're pissing me off than when you're not. Um, but I really do love you so much and I wouldn't be where I am today like in my music and in um, my social life without you. So thank you and I love you. I don't think I tell you enough how proud I am of all the things you're doing and you know, just seeing you go for all the things that you are trying to go for and, and also value yourself like number one like that that's just so nice to see, and I guess I'm, I want to take notes, you know, <laughs> just like because of how great that, you know, all the things you're doing, and um, and also I just don't have enough time with you ever, and I just need more time. So if you could give me more time. Oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Over the last seven years, going to eight years that I've known her, like hanging out with her is like an adventure every single day. So I just like, I, I can't imagine what my life would be like without Kendall at all. Like there's just no, like I, I picture it and I'm like, I can't, it doesn't make sense. So thank you for just bringing out this person that I was and I never dared to be. And she really helped me get out of that. And I just, I appreciate that a lot. Um, so one, I love you, obviously. 
um, don't say it enough, uh, to I'm so, so, so proud of you for how, who you are. Like it's the amount of things that you can get knocked down on and get back up and just like live life is amazing. Like it's literally something that like I, it's the one thing that I see in them just like I need to make sure that she doesn't lose that. Um, and also thank you because like I, I know I say thank you a lot but like it, I need you to understand how like important you are to me because I would, literally would not be here without you. I would be dead. So thank you. The feeling is mutual. Um, I also wouldn't be alive and here today if your friendship hasn't been with me for the last few years. Um, I don't think you give yourself enough credit for how great of a person and great of a guy that you are. And I'm sorry that someone hurt you and made you feel like you can't express your feelings as well as you used to. But I am just grateful for your patience and your loyalty. And our friendship is always going to be so important to me. If there ever comes a time in the future where we have to stop being friends, like I just know that I'm just glad that it existed and that it was there and I was there with you. And also whoever ends up with him, they're gonna be the luckiest and most loved girl. And yeah, I just love you. And I, I'm just really happy to be your friend. I'm really sorry. I don't know where I would be right now if I didn't meet you. I know it's, my life was kind of hectic before uh, our friendship. So you brought a lot of stability to that. I know I don't say enough how grateful I am for you, but I really am. Because there's people that you meet in your life that kind of just put you in a whole different trajectory in life. And you're definitely one of those people that have, I don't know where I would be right now if you haven't given me the guidance and the friendship and the love and the care that you've had. So I love you and I'm, I'm just really sorry for what happened. Oh, I can't talk that. <laughs> and Jay, I'm really glad you gave us another chance. You know, after that time apart, I think I really realized how much of a rock you were to me in my personal life in terms of just my confidence and just feeling like loved and supported. I definitely felt like those were some of the values you bring into my life that was kind of missing, you know, and I've learned so much from you. And I just feel so grateful that I have almost like a it, it almost feels like a place like home. Can you guys just like hug each other? Just everyone come on, just like get in there. <laughs> get out. away. No. 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 I, I, I didn't, I, You almost made me cry. I almost cried. Are you crying? I was crying Are you bit. crying? I turned a little bit. <laughs> Sadly, we've reached the end of this episode. Join us next time as identical twins share their deepest secrets and stories. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you think we should hook up again. Wait, what? <laughs>